Let's look at the head and neck region. So when you look at carnivores, what you notice is they have reduced facial, facial muscles. That allows them to open their mouths very wide so they can run up and grab onto to something to bring it down. The major uh, muscle operating the lower jaw is the temporalis muscle, which sits on the top of their head. When you pet your dog or your cat, you're actually petting their temporalis muscle. Um, their teeth are designed, as you can see, for ripping, tearing, and cutting. They do not chew their food. They just slice off a huge chunk of meat and swallow it. Therefore, their jaw is very stable, has minimal side-to-side -side movement, and their saliva has no enzymes because they can't release uh, digestive enzymes in their mouth, otherwise they wouldn't have a mouth. So when you look at the actual jaw structure, you see that the jaw joint is on the same plane as the cheek teeth, and that allows the jaws to act like a pair of shears. You notice that the molars in the upper jaw slide completely past the molars in the lower jaw, and that means that when the jaws close, they close like with a cutting action like a pair of shears. The other thing I want to point out is this area called the angle of the mandible in carnivores is vestigial because the muscles that attach there in meat eaters don't do anything. Um, uh, and so the angle of the mandible is not expanded. And they have very powerful jaws. Uh, when you look at the bite strength uh, and bite forces generated, you see that dogs can get up to 450 pounds per square inch, wolves over 500, jaguars 700 pounds per square inch, uh, lions and tigers up to 900 pounds, hyenas over 1,000 pounds per square inch. And by contrast, we can barely manage 150 pounds per square inch, meaning we can do a walnut but not a Brazil nut. Well, the herbivores, again, completely different. Number one, they have a walled-in oral cavity. So they have very well-developed facial muscles, small opening into the oral cavity, uh, very well-developed uh, uh, lips. But you notice that the angle of the mandible is expanded because the muscles that attach here, the uh, masseters on the outside, what are called pterygoids on the inside, are the primary muscles operating the lower jaw. This area at top where the uh, temporalis sits is almost non-existent because the temporalis muscle does very little in plant-eating animals. And the main thing that you notice is that the jaw joint in plant-eating animals has moved to a position above the plane of the cheek teeth. That imparts an L shape to the lower jaw, meaning that when the jaw closes, instead of closing in a zipper-like fashion, the teeth, teeth come together on top of each other to form, to form these extended grinding platforms. And this above the plane of the cheek teeth type of jaw is so important for processing plant foods, it is believed to have evolved, uh, uh, I think, 15 different times independently throughout mammalian uh, evolution. And the teeth are designed for cropping and grinding. Angle of the mandible is expanded. The lower jaw has pronounced side-to-side -side, uh, movements. And this is for the grinding movements of chewing because you have to chew plant foods in order to extract the nutrients uh, in plant tissues. Salivary amylase is an enzyme that breaks down carbohydrate, uh, which is found in the saliva of many plant-eating species. So look, uh, picture of molars of uh, the meat eaters versus uh, plant eaters. You see that the carnivores have these blade-like uh, mo um, molars that are shaped like little steak knives, whereas the herbivores, such as humans, have flat nodular molars for uh, grinding. The jaw joint in carnivores closes in a vertical fashion. The uh, teeth slide past each other in a vertical fashion. In the herbivores, they slide across each other in a horizontal fashion. If there is anyone in this room whose teeth slide past each other vertically, please see me after the lecture. I will get you some help. <laughs> but this means that herbivores can do something carnivores can't. Because of the walled-in oral cavity and the small opening, herbivores can create a vacuum, meaning they can suck up water. Carnivores can't create a vacuum. That's why they have to lap up their water. So your ability to use a straw, you owe to being an herbivore. The esophagus is the tube that leads from the mouth to the stomach. In carnivores, it's very wide and stretchy. allows them to swallow these huge hunks of, of meat and bone and, uh, not get, uh, uh, and not choke themselves to death. 
Whereas in the herbivores, it's narrow and muscular, and they can only handle a uh, small bolus of thoroughly chewed food. In human beings, 90% of the people who choke to death every year choke to death on, guess what, meat. And hot dogs are the number one culprit. So moving on to the upper uh, gastrointestinal tract, uh, just to make uh, uh, some important points, Animal foods are actually very easily digested because animal cells have a cell membrane made of fatty molecules. Inside, there's some water, some protein, some more fat, but there's no fiber, there's no cell, uh, uh, cell wall. There's a cell membrane, but no cell wall. Therefore, uh, animals that eat uh, meat don't need a long or elaborate uh, digestive tract. So they have a simple stomach but it has very powerful acid, meaning that when it has food in it, they can secrete enough acid to get the pH of their stomach down to less than one. That's stronger than battery acid. And it's necessary so they can dissolve hooves, bones, and the tough connective tissue that makes up hides. They have gigantic stomachs. Their stomachs hold up to 60 to 70% of the total gut capacity, and it enables them to consume up to 30% of their body weight at one meal. And that means it's designed for in intermittent feeding. Why is that important? Is hunting efficient or inefficient? Okay, so for every 10 times a carnivore goes out to hunt, how often are they successful? It's actually one, once or twice out of 10 times. So let me ask you something. I'm going to point now. If 90% of the time you sat down to have a meal, somebody snatched your food away and didn't let you eat, what would happen to you? You'd starve to death, right? Because you would not be able to ingest enough calories during that 10% you were allowed to eat to last you or to keep you healthy. That's why carnivores need these giant stomachs. Because hunting is so inefficient, they have to be, once they actually get some food, they've got to be able to consume enough calories to recover all of the calories that they expended chasing things they didn't catch and still have enough left over to sustain them until they can get another meal as well as do any um, uh, uh, physical repair and, and so on that they need to do. Make, does that make sense to people? All right. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the, this young lady asked me, well, does that mean that because we, we tend in Western countries to eat a lot, that we're um, uh, eating 30% of our body weight? Um, so how much do you weigh? 132 pounds. 30% of your body weight would be uh, 36 pounds of food. Do you eat 36 pounds of food a day? There's no way you can eat that much food. The, the, I, she says the size of a stomach has changed. It is nowhere near large enough for you to eat 36 pounds of food. It's impossible. We, have, we cannot consume 30% of our body weight uh, in a day. On, on average, human beings like other herbivores, we eat about 3.3% of our body weight every day. Not 30, uh, 30%. I tell you, maybe, I'm a, maybe I should keep it up here. Uh, and again, so as I said, the huge uh, uh, capacity is necessary because hunting is so inefficient. Stomach that can hold 30% uh, of an animal's body weight means a 45 kilo, uh, 50 kilogram wolf can eat up to 34 pounds of meat at a sitting. A uh, uh, 300 pound lioness can eat 100 pounds of meat at a sitting. And so for this 50 kilogram wolf, or dog if you will, they can consume 21,000 calories at a single meal. We can't even come close to that. And that's enough energy, again, to recover what they wasted and still last them until they can catch something else. 
their small intestine actually is very short because the, once the uh, meat is liquefied in the stomach, the protein and fat is very easily absorbed, and so they don't need a lot of surface area. And then uh, it's passed on to the large intestine, what's, whatever residue is less, left over, so they can quickly uh, get it out of the body. And so this is some pictures of uh, carnivore digestive tracts. And essentially what you see, big stomach, short, small intestine, short, straight, uh, large intestine. All right. Well, plants are different, right? Because plants don't have bones. As a result, they have to use insoluble fibers to stiffen and protect their tissues. As a result, in addition to a cell wall, every plant has I mean, excuse me, in addition to a cell membrane, every plant cell has a cell wall made up of cellulose, which is fiber. Well, what's the issue with cellulose? The issue with cellulose is that no mammal makes enzymes that digest cellulose. Okay? We don't make enzymes that digest cellulose. Are there any creatures that do make enzymes that digest cellulose? Bacteria, exactly. And, well, okay, yeah, we're kind of back to the termites. Yeah. <laughs> and this brings up the fact that there are two main ways of dealing with plant foods, depending on what kind of plant food you eat. Those animals like the ruminants, like cows, antelope, that eat mainly grass, hay, high cellulose-containing foods, they are the ones that have the four stomachs. Why? Because in that first stomach is a soup made up of bacteria and protozoa that release cellulose digesting enzymes. That's why what will happen is the cow goes out in the morning and she just scoops up a bunch of grass, swallows it, lets it soak up those enzymes, then she brings it back up and does what with it? Chews it. Because chewing is designed to break apart the plant material, mix it with the enzymes to allow that process of digestion to begin. Then when she swallows it, it goes into a different stomach and the, the process uh, proceeds uh, uh, apace. Animals like uh, horses and other herbivores that eat high energy plant foods like grains and root vegetables and fruits, they do, they, it would be inefficient for them to have a uh, uh, four stomach uh, type of digestive system because the bacteria would util, use up all of that energy in an apple or in a, uh, uh, some corn. So instead, they have a simple stomach, liquefy the meal, send it through their small intestine, extract the readily avail available nutrients, and they send the leftover fiber into the colon where bacteria or the microbiome in the colon then starts to break down that fiber and they extract additional nutrients from it. And you can tell the difference between the two digestive schemes by looking at what comes out. The four stomach fermenters have a very efficient process and they produce a liquid stool. And if you've ever seen a fresh cow patty, you know exactly what I mean. Whereas the hindgut fermenters, like the horses, produce a much more solid fuel, uh, stool that has a lot of undigested fiber in it. So we're just going to focus on the herbivores with simple stomachs, since we only have a simple stomach. It holds less than 30% of the total gut capacity. That and herbivores, on average, eat about 3.3% of their body weight over the course of the day. But they have to eat multiple times to even achieve that. It is only mild to moderately acidic when it's full with food. It, the pH is around 4.5 to 5. Uh, it's designed for batch feeding. So we saw in the carnivores, they're designed for intermittent feeding. They'll eat today, won't eat for a week or more. The herbivores all have to eat multiple meals every single day in order to remain alive. They cannot hold enough calories at a single meal to last them a single day. And um, again, they have to eat several times every day. Um, their small intestine, on the other hand, is much, much longer than that of the carnivores. The herbivore small intestine is 10 to 12 times body length, and that's because fiber slows down the extraction of these nutrients, so they need a lot more surface area. And it has an adjustable mix of carbohydrate, fat, and protein digestive enzymes, unlimited capacity to absorb carbohydrate. Here's some examples. And so you see rabbit, 
Dictic, which is an antelope, has a multiple stomachs, and then the zebra. But notice on, uh, at both ends that the colon has this sacculated, pouched appearance, and in the rabbit, you also see the presence of an appendix.